Welcome everyone. Today is May 12th, 2024, and I just gave all of my plants a drink of water. So I thought I will show you what it looks like so far. So it'll be a temporary garden tour. Not everything's gonna stay in the greenhouse, but until it gets a bit warmer at night, all my fruit trees are gonna stay in there. So I'm here recording live with my farm hand who's working very hard. So um, she's a sweet little thing and she just likes to be wherever I am. So if she's in the house, she'll cry. So I just put lawn chair furniture on the ground and she's happy as can be. So she will be my assistant for the day. And before I go in, these are just some things that I have out getting some sun. And I have never grown pretty much anything before. So these are strawberries I bought at the store. I think some of them were from Walmart, some were Canadian Tire. And what I did was I put them in these hanging baskets just temporarily because something that I've learned is that they have a lot of roots that like to spread. So the more space you give them, the more they're gonna keep growing and then the more fruits you're gonna get. So I don't like to confine them into small things like a hanging basket, but temporarily it was better than nothing because I ran out of buckets. But I'm going to transfer them to five gallon buckets later and that will be their home until I'm able to move. And then I plan on building the nice raised beds wherever I move to and getting them in the ground. But for now, everything is in buckets so that it will be easy to move whenever I'm able to finally move. And so I've noticed that there is some green. So it looks like at least two of them made it. The third one, I haven't really looked too deep, but it, I think it's just slow to bloom, but this one here and the one behind it right there, they have some green. So I'm very happy, I'm very excited because that means I have to spend less money on plants. So happy with those. And then these are the peonies that I bought bare root from Canadian Tire and Walmart. And they are doing beautiful, I'm very pleased. So this was just a little root. Lower this here, need a better picture. Okay, so these were just bare root when I bought them, and all of them are doing great except this little one here in a bucket. It looks beautiful though, the color is great and it's got its blooms. It just took a lot longer to bloom, but it could just be because of the piece of root that it was. Some of them might have just been a better piece, but. I mean, it's alive, it's looking beautiful. It's just very slow to grow. So I'm going to zoom out and head into the greenhouse. So this is only a temporary really um, being used because it is not finished. I got tough text roof on one side and plywood from my work tables on the other side as a temporary roof. So. You know, it's not fully enclosed. As you can see, I have plastic walls. So, you know, it's just a better than nothing. It's, it'll be really nice once it's fully finished in the tough text, but for now, I just use plastic sheeting. This lasted two winters. I mean, I just got a few little holes and that was already there. So um, this stuff is amazing. I, I really highly recommend it. So what I did to be able to at least get my plants in here, I can't put these in the house and I have pets. So I, in order for me to have seeds starting before I can plant them in the ground, which is like middle of next month, I have to be able to put them somewhere outside. So what I did was on the back wall, I put the plastic sheeting up. The tape isn't holding really well, so I just have it being held up by some ply or some two by fours. So I have to fix the end corner, which is easy to do. But for now, I mean, it's it's working well. So I came in here to start cleaning out half the greenhouse. I had to use it as a garage because I don't have one. So um, I'm going to show you what I've got so far, and. I'll start here. So in the corner, I have the Waltham Butternut Squash for Survival Seeds 2024, and I will link 
I'll put the link in the description below if you uh, don't know what that is or if you're interested you can click on that and then I also have I started rhubarb from seed because I wanted rhubarb plants but I, it was hard for me to find them in the store I saw them once at Walmart but I didn't have money to buy them and then every single time I went back they never had any so I got some seed Let's see there so I got some seed really cheap and I was shocked how easy these are to germinate like really they germinated very fast and they look pretty so um, I actually do have a bunch of rhubarb that I'm growing and I know it'll take several years before I can get a harvest but it's better than nothing so I've got those I got some peas when I say peas I mean the peas you eat because I also have sweet peas but those are flowers so we have some red acre cabbage, some Brussels sprouts, marigolds, some zucchini and squash. And these black cups here, mostly all of them are the Detroit red beets for the survival seeds. I do have a zucchini there, one that's hanging on for dear life. I think I'm gonna have to replace that with a new seed. So some of these I think have done very well considering that I wasn't able to get them planted into dirt when they needed to be, and they were stuck in those plastic bags for a long time. But I was able to save a lot, and then whatever doesn't look good by next week, I'm just gonna put a new seed in there. And then down here, we have a little bit of watermelon, some okra, some uh, Utah tall celery, Saskatoon berries. I wanna try and find some bushes this year, but you know, worst case, I'll have to grow from seed. And then here's a whole bunch of stuff. The labels are on the other side. So these are, let me see, cabbage. I think it's all cabbage. Cabbage and some celery at the end. And I go down here. Okay, so this here is the peas that I was telling you about that you eat. And then uh, let's see, there's mostly all peas. Oh, and then over in the blue is the sweet peas. Those are the flowers. And I love the smell of the sweet peas. That's why I wanted to grow those as flowers, just because they smell so good. And then we have some marble mix of Peru as a flower. We have some yellow onion, lots of pumpkins, and here's some more rhubarb. And we got watermelon, more pumpkins, Pumpkin, pumpkin. Let me see. Oh, more rhubarb at the back. They're growing very well. Actually. So I'm quite pleased with the rhubarb and how that's turning out. And then we have more Detroit red beets and more peas. And the peas always do very well here. So I'm very happy with that. I will actually come over because they keep punching me. <laughs> so this here's the red currants. This was just a little stick from Walmart. Actually, it wasn't a stick. It was like a little green stem. Um, it wasn't even a piece of bark. I got this last year and this thing has really taken off. And there's berries or little currants. I don't know if you can see them. So it actually has a whole bunch of currants on there. And let me just see here. So I'm going to try and get through here without falling. Okay, so we have, I'll start with the end. We have some jalapeno peppers, some beefsteak tomatoes, 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 sweet peppers, pickling cucumbers, um, okay, so these here are the little tiny sweet peppers, little mini ones from the store. I'm going to experiment and see not only if they grow, but if they produce. Because often when you plant seeds from things you get at the store, like your fruits and vegetables, you may get them to grow, but it doesn't mean they'll produce anything and you don't know what they'll produce because they could have cross-pollinated. So that's an experiment. We have some more peas, cantaloupe. I just, I don't like cantaloupe. I just want to get rid of the seeds because I've had them for three years. My dog loves cantaloupe, so that's for her. We have more cucumbers. I got morning glory flowers. I think some of them have to be, I mean, 
that's just not going to work. So uh, these are going to, this one here is still good, but I'm going to have to replace those seeds and start fresh. We have more rhubarb. Um, these here are the bare roots from the Dollarama. It, these are the, I believe it's the, yeah, it's the Dahlia. They're like a hot pink and bright yellow. So I want to see how well that will do. And then under here, let's see what we have. Okay, I can't get in here. Okay, so um, I these ones here are onions, but I ran out of tags. I have to label them. And then we have some sweet peas, milk thistle, uh, watermelons. We have some more butternut squash, cucumbers, and this here is lemongrass. As you can see, I have 72 of those. <laughs> so lemongrass helps keep mosquitoes away which is one of my top priorities is mosquito repellent plants. So I've got lemongrass growing. Um, so I have to plant my peppermint today, but I'm trying to do peppermints. And um, actually one of the top things they hate is garlic. So um, that's why at Disneyland, they spray with garlic. Um, there's a lot of places that spray with garlic. It's something that I actually, I didn't spray two years ago with garlic because I didn't have garlic spray but what I've been doing actually the last couple years even though I can't get a garlic I use those solo cups and I plant garlic cloves in there in the last couple years I had garlic all around my deck and just everywhere I could possibly plant I think I had like 300 cloves of garlic around my deck and the areas I my dog goes to the bathroom so um, I do love to plant a lot of garlic just to keep mosquitoes away. If you plant them in your gardens, it actually helps keep pests away too because they know it's toxic. And um, actually, just a side note, I know there's a lot of health benefits to garlic. And if you love garlic and you want to eat it, that's your choice. Go ahead. But because I love garlic too. But the problem is that they don't tell you the bad side. So yes, there are a lot of good uses for garlic. But what garlic does is it actually eats away the membrane of your cells. And so the negative of garlic far outweighs any of the positives. And also then you can get into why pilots are not allowed, especially in like the military, they're not allowed to have garlic and onions because it messes up your left and right um, brain and how it connects to each other. So when you're a pilot, you have to have your left and right um, brain connecting properly and it interferes with how your brain functions so yeah garlic absolutely not i don't eat it anymore at all but it's great in the garden um now onions are actually cut they actually do almost the same but just nowhere near as bad so i mean i can't i just you know sometimes it's really hard because garlic and onions are the two favorite things to cook with so i do still use onions even though they're not that great for you overall but you know there's not much left of what I can what's good for you so yes I do still eat onions even though I know I shouldn't but garlic absolutely not I just don't so if you do that's great I don't have a problem with people that's your choice it's just for me I just don't I try to keep try as hard as I can to eat and grow foods that are really good for my overall health and are going to keep my cells in a good working condition because when your cells are not working properly then it affects the rest of your body it can't fight off all the bad stuff and then you're getting you know you got the cancers and this and that but it you know it's not just garlic it's well, yeah, garlic can do that. But, you know, then when you compound that with all the other things, you just don't have a chance, really. And I don't, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to make as many changes as possible, even if it's just little ones. So um, that's just my little random garlic info. And then over here, I have some holy basil. Mosquitoes don't like basil. And um, Holy basil is more for tinctures and stuff because it's so powerful. Uh, some Rosa Sharon and some more lemongrass. And then I have a, ra a raspberry bush here. It's doing amazing, better than I ever did last year. And then this one right here is the baby pear root that was in the tr my pear tree um, that I got. 
a Canadian tire because it was like dead, but I was able to fix it. So I got it at for like 10 bucks and when I, cause there was no roots. So when I took the trunk out to scrape all of the bark and put rooting powder on it, and it actually did seem to work. There actually was a piece of root in there growing with a whole bunch of green leaves on it. So that's what I planted here. I want to see if this is going to grow into a tree. And then I actually get two trees. And this one here. What are you? I think it's a grape. This is a... Oh, no, it's not. It's a high-yielding blueberry... What is this? It just says high-yielding blueberry. So that's blueberry. And then if I come over here, let's see. Okay. So this one here is a grape. And then we have a raspberry here. And get over here. So this here raspberry is really doing well. And we have grapes here raspberries this is the pear tree i'm waiting really really badly um for to see some some buds because then i know that it survived the winter and is alive because i'm really want this to to be okay i don't think it is but i'm really hopeful um you know even if i can just get one branch because i can air graft it but i got some strawberries raspberries back in here this is the other pear tree this one i think um is in much better condition than the other one let me see here so i'm just hoping they both survive but i'll be happy if i at least get one and i have some things at the back and then over here my plastic is falling i have to fix that but um, this is my most favorite. This is the Juliet cherry tree. It was just a little green, like little stem, one little stem at Walmart. And that was last year. Look how much this thing has grown. It's actually got bark on it. So this is looking so great. And I'm really pleased with this. This is what I want to see on my pear trees. So I'm very happy with my cherry tree. And then it was only $12.98, I think. So I've got Amish peas. We have more peas. Uh, the pepperoncini from the um, Survival Seeds collaboration. Got peppers. Lots of tomatoes. Tomatoes, peppers, peppers. Um, oh, it's more sweet pea flowers. Peas. This one here I'm most excited to try because it's supposed to be giant peppers, like those um, salad peppers. So they're not like bell peppers. They're like the kind that kind of go straight. And um, they're supposed to be giant. And that's what I'm looking for. I want to grow the biggest, fine varieties that do well here that grow the biggest, um, you, like the biggest size. So you can plant, you know, just the least amount of plants and get the most amount of um stuff growing so i'm really excited for that we have more tomatoes the mariana tomatoes is also for their survival seeds and i do see one the very front left let me see this one has sprouted i don't know if you can see it but it has sprouted so i'm very very pleased with that one and we have some more peppers, peppers. We have tomatoes, peppers. Um, my, a lot of my tomatoes are actually doing very well. They are sprouting and I'm very pleased to see that. Um, we have peas over near the end, more tomatoes, um, more peas and the peas are doing great. And then tomato way at the back end that are really doing well. And then at the front, we have more peppers. And then coming back this way, I'm seeing more tomatoes. It's still pretty much all tomatoes. So these are doing great. Um, one of the tomatoes is the Peace Vine. They're cherry tomatoes. And I really liked those because when I read them, it had a whole bunch of um, like health benefits that made it a better choice than other cherry tomatoes. So I um, am pleased to see those growing. And then down here we have some okra and we have cucumbers and tomatillo and we have Saskatoon berries and Chicago pickling. And then over here, 
should probably turn that around so I can see. I just didn't want the, it blocking out the sun. But we have some onions, 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 all onions. So I just turn it like this so it's not blocking the sun. And I think, oh, over here. I don't know if these are going to survive, but what I did was as my strawberry strawberry plants were growing runners, I cut them off, put them in in um, buckets that I just reused from the garden center. And I don't know if they survived the winter. I have no idea. So this is what I'm working on today. So I had to use this little corner here for storage and as a garage so and I didn't have shelves I had absolutely nothing and a blizzard was coming so tossed everything in here as fast as I could to at least get out of the snow and um, now I have to sort take all this out sort it up and get it all neat and organized but I did have all of these actually are brand new I got last year these are still on the package I didn't have this here I didn't have time before the blizzards come so I opened up all the packages there are actually five stories but I made them three and um, I actually just put all these up and on the back and I still have one package left but I have to clear the stuff out to get that open so slowly getting stuff done in here there's another one that was a strawberry so hopefully some things work out here we have some green I think that is my strawberry so that's good. But if anybody can identify this, I greatly appreciate it. Let me see. What is this? It's growing in my pear tree bucket. If it's just a weed, that's fine. I'll clean it out so it's not taking away from the roots of the pear. But I would like to know if that's something good. And then I can repot it. So... So that's my temporary garden tour. Um, I do plan on getting all those trees out and I'm gonna put them on my front deck and it'll look really nice. Um, I did that last year, it was beautiful. So all my five gallon buckets of the fruit stuff is gonna come out, but for the meantime, I'm just leaving it in here because it's right under the tuft hex. It gets nice warm sun, which it needs. It's doing very well. And I shut the door at night. It doesn't get the frost. Do have to fix the plastic, but even so, I mean, you don't get frost in here. So that's good. Because I also have the overhang too. And um, it's just done well, all this stuff in here. So I'm just going to stay here until it gets warmer. And then once I can get some lumber for raised beds, then all my plants are going to get planted. And more because I'm not done. I'm still doing my seeds. So I still haven't done my beans, which I have to do. And I still have, uh, actually I still have a bunch of stuff I have to plant. But um, yeah, I'm working on my fencing around my porch right now. So I will post a video later because I was able to figure it out and do it all by myself. So if you need to get stuff done, but you're thinking, well, I don't have any help. Well, I did it. And if I can do it, anyone can, because construction's not my thing. I've had to learn from scratch. I've never had been taught how to use a drill. I don't like saws, none of that stuff. And I managed by myself to be able to do it. So I'm going to show you a video and that's where my trees are gonna go, like all fixed up really nice though on the, on the big porch. So I'll post that later today and show you what I got done so far. So you can know that if you have to do something, it is possible even if you're one person. And I have permanent spine damage. I'm not supposed to be doing lifting and bending. I'm in pain all the time. So if I can do it, most other people should be able to. Um, you know, it's not something I like to do and I don't want to build stuff, but if I don't do it, it don't get done. So I hope that it motivates and encourages people and, you know, get out there and start growing groceries instead of buying them because it just tastes better. It's better for your health and it saves you money. Plus it makes, or at least for me, it makes me feel good. I really enjoy seeing 
all of the stuff that I'm able to grow. And especially when it really starts to grow, it brings me so much joy and peace and the smells. You do not get these smells at the grocery store. I will tell you, you know, my dad always grew tomatoes in his garden and there is nothing like that tomato smell. And I haven't smelled that. I don't even remember the last time I ever smelled a fresh tomato. And um, when I tried to grow of them last year, the one thing I noticed, even though I didn't have enough time in the season to actually get anything growing off them, the plants smelled that tomato smell. And every time I could, every time I come outside and I smell that tomato smell, it brings me so much joy and I just love it. It makes me feel good. And cucumbers, oh my gosh, the plants. It's amazing how well um, these plants hold a smell because you would think that, oh, it's just the fruits that smell, but these plants are so strong. It's a really good fragrance. And if you have stuff planted in your windows, you get that nice breeze coming in. I mean, it smells amazing. And so I'm just really hoping and I'm challenging myself to find a way to get as much to grow as possible and harvest so that I don't have to use the grocery stores or at least as much as possible. I want to um, be able to um, grow and harvest and can as much as I can and not be dependent on the store. Plus, you know, it's also for your health. I mean, finances, I mean depends on how you do it it may cost more money but in the long run it's worth it because it's you know it's not cheap to build raised beds and get soil but sometimes it there are ways that it can be so I hope everyone is able to find a way to just get something growing um even if it's like in a bucket or that you get free from the store just anything even if it's just like one tomato plant and one pepper plant and maybe a five gallon bucket with some carrots and maybe you know some onions just anything anything you can grow just just do it <laughs> even if you know it doesn't look fancy it doesn't look nice just use what you got if you have some containers you're throwing in the recycle use them as planters cut the tops off add some holes in the bottom there you go <laughs> so um, hopefully everyone has an awesome summer and the most amazing gardens and an abundance of good quality food that they can harvest. And that's it for this video. So I will see you on the next one. And hopefully it's really nice and pretty because this is a huge mess that I'm really dreading having to deal with. But, you know, it is what it is.